Good day, everyone. Welcome to part two of The Quest for Performance. Did you know when in windowed mode in Simu, if you have a 4K graphics pack active, regardless of your screen resolution, you can actually take 4K screenshots. The simple way that you do this is you hold shift and you press print screen. Sometimes you might need to press shift function and print screen. We're going to cover a lot of information in this segment, so strap in and get ready for a wall of info bombs. If you haven't seen part one, it is recommended to go do so right now. Link on screen and in the description below. In part one, when explaining paging files, I said that using an SSD as one can lead to problems for the drive. This mainly applies to older SSDs, whereas modern drives shouldn't suffer from being used as a page file. There are clear advantages to running your system and programs on a solid state drive, especially in regard to load times in Simu, as well as data read and write speeds. Also, as a paging file, SSDs are significantly quicker, potentially leading to less in-game stutter when called upon. As regards FPS performance, I personally did not notice a difference from my game files being on an SSD or HDD. In this arena, CPU single core performance is king in Simu. If you'd like to learn more about benchmarking your single core CPU performance, then you can watch my guide on that as well. Link on screen and in the description below. Is there a difference between Windows 7 64 bit and Windows 10 in terms of performance? In my experience with the two operating systems, I didn't notice any difference at all. Let's take a moment to talk about graphics cards. The reason you hear them talked about so little is because they play a small role in how well your game runs within Simu. Many other factors come first, from CPU to RAM to hard drive to GPU last. Of course, the specs and speeds of each part play a role. Both AMD and Nvidia GPUs have become infamous for different reasons. Nvidia cards suffer from a known reported memory leak which leads to obscene amounts of RAM being consumed. The advantage of an NVIDIA GPU is its OpenGL support in-game. This is an area where AMD suffers greatly. It poorly supports OpenGL which is required for Simu. Additionally, due to market dominance, NVIDIA cards have seen more Simu developer time than AMD. This has left AMD users feeling a bit left out in the cold and forgotten. Perhaps more importantly, AMD cards have suffered from significantly more graphical glitches within Simu and Breath of the Wild. However, hope is not lost. With each new iteration of the emulator, the situation has been improving for AMD users. On the other hand, it is important to discuss the positives of AMD GPUs. They don't seem to suffer from the same memory leaks as Nvidia requiring up to six times less memory for shader compilation. Alternatively, AMD users can choose to run a Linux OS where they should experience similar performance to Nvidia. Finally, let's talk about Intel HD GPU performance. Nope. Remember, always make sure to keep your GPU drivers up to date as well as having the latest CMU version. If you can overclock your CPU and know how to safely, do it. I have a high spec PC but get low FPS, why? Simu is barely using my CPU GPU, why am I suffering from low FPS? When it comes to this question and you have followed everything that I've shown in terms of improving performance, then after that I don't have a good answer for you. I can only assume some form of user error. Why does Breath of the Wild lock to 20 FPS mostly in towns and villages? There are a few ongoing theories and facts regarding this. The first is increased AI and NPC presence with individual paths and behaviours increasing overall load. Secondly, the game runs on a double buffer vSync. In Breath of the Wild this leads to frame locks in stages from 30 to 20 and 20 to 15. If the emulated GPU does not feel that it's receiving sufficient power, the frames will drop. I'll link to a much more detailed video below. Where can I get the game? My first reply to this question would be that you should dump the game files from your Wii U. If you mean where can I get the game on the internet, then I have never addressed this topic and I never will. Do graphic packs impact performance? On screen, you'll see three examples of the exact same scenario. Left to right, we have the 360 pack only, then 1080, then 4K. 
The maximum performance in Breath of the Wild is 30 FPS, so this is our goal and limit. In my experience, there is no performance difference between 360 and 1080, however, 4K is a bit too much for my system. It's important to note that graphic packs draw performance from your GPU, so the better your card, the better high res performance you will see. My GTX 750 Ti simply isn't cutting it. Let's see if we can achieve anything interesting in a village. Now this is the perfect opportunity to try some placebo techniques. We're going to activate Game Booster in Razer Cortex, then adjust Windows for best performance, followed by the Nvidia control panel tweaks whilst using the 360 resolution pack. Another placebo is adjusting the core affinity of an i7, which I can't test here due to my CPU. Then we're gonna finish with a minor GPU overclock. As you can see, these adjustments are all part of a futile attempt to break through the 20 FPS lock. It didn't work. That brings me back to the point about single core CPU performance. My i5-6400 is not quite strong enough. Do low res graphic packs improve performance? In my experience, no, but they may help with a low end GPU. Frame limiting and the cheat engine speed hack. Before we were using Fenskip, most users used Cheat Engine to simulate the additional frame performance they desired to make the game playable. If you're stuck around 10 to 15 FPS, you can try the technique of limiting your FPS to 10 and setting the Cheat Engine speed to 2.2. This should maintain fairly normal movement. As an example, as you saw earlier, I was unable to reach 30 FPS using the 4K graphic pack. So let's test the aforementioned method. I'll leave you to be the judge of how you think it looks and performs. An obvious downside that this causes for me is input lag. Alternatively, if you're unhappy with the performance here, you can try frame limiting using Nvidia Profile Inspector. 60 FPS in Breath of the Wild. This is asked and requested all the time. Whilst I want to never say never, let's discuss the facts. Many Zelda games have the frame rate hard coded into the engine. Therefore, animations and physics are also locked to the FPS, which in Zelda generally and Breath of the Wild is 30 frames per second. The 60 FPS Simu users experience sometimes in shrines is simply not true 60 FPS. The behavior is more like 30 FPS at two times speed, which turns the experience into a Benny Hill skit rather than The Legend of Zelda. It looks ridiculous. My personal recommendation in this scenario is to use River Tuner to limit your FPS to 30 so you can play the game normally. If you want to witness a genuine example of 60 FPS, then allow me to point you in the direction of Yam Gaming, who has used frame interpolation to simulate a true 60 FPS experience. As I said, never say never. After everything I've covered across parts 1 and 2 of The Quest for Performance and you're still no closer to a playable experience, then I have three things to say to you. Number one, wait for further optimizations in Simu. Number two, upgrade your PC hardware. And finally, number three, try playing a different game. This is all theoretical and not a guarantee for how the game will or won't perform on your system. Ultimately, what I've provided here is a fairly detailed tutorial and demonstration. I highly encourage you to go test the things I've shown you. Good luck, have fun, and I wish you the best in your adventure. Let's hope that Simu will reach a point where it is fully optimized for lower end systems. In my opinion, you're gonna need a lot of patience. So there you go, people. That was the quest for perfect performance in Breath of the Wild in Simu. I took a long time putting this together for you people out there, focusing on providing accurate information. If you enjoyed the content and would like to see more, please feel free to subscribe. I've been The Complaining Gamer, take care, have an awesome day and I will catch you next time.